and an accountant somewhere is like, how did he get so good? <laughs> 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 like, how how, how did he do that? <laughs> Why he can do this in five minutes? Huh? It's gonna take like three hours to finish one ledger. <laughs> Keep it simple. All right. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Keep It Simple, your favorite financial literacy podcast. Um, today we have a very special guest, and she's none other than Ketanya, local actress, host, also an MC, right? Yes, and content creator. And content creator. Recent one. Jack of all trades. Is that why? Kate of all trades. Kate of all trades on Instagram. Get it! You said jack of all trades. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, no, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I got it. We got it. I got it. We 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 got it. We're smart. We keep up. I read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> anyway, today we're gonna talk about um, what it's like, you know, to be to be working in the arts uh, industry as an actress, you know, as a host, MC. I'm sure this is something that we've all thought about at some point in our lives. Yeah. Right, Pris. Have yeah. you ever had? Delusions? I think that my, my parents had delusions <laughs> that I was gonna sing and dance. That is not what I am doing, obviously. <laughs> right. And yeah. I've also had my fair share of delusions, you know, thinking about what it would be like to be in front of the camera one day. You are what? I am right now. How the turntables. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you happy now, mom and dad? Are you happy? Did they even watch this? Um, yeah. I didn't even listen to this podcast, Chris. I don't know. Chris. I can't assume these things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so basically we just want to talk to you about uh, your career so far, what it's like to basically do what you do on a daily basis. Yeah. But before we do that, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? to our viewers and our listeners on Spotify. And, yeah. Can. Hi guys, I'm Catania. Um, I'm also known as Kate. Or if you're on Instagram, I'm Kate of all traits. Not trades. Yeah, because that was okay. taken. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right, unfortunate. You know, yeah, you gotta flow. Yeah, <laughs> you, have to, you have to innovate on the board. Okay, I work, yeah. I work. So it has, <laughs> it has, a, it has a nice ring, solution it has it. A nice yeah. ring yeah. to it still. Okay, thank yes. you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm an actress, a host, uh, and most recently I, I create content as well on social media. Oh, what kind of content do you create? Mm, so I'm on Instagram, as I said earlier. Yes. Um, I also, rec- very, very recently, I only started doing TikTok. I was about to ask. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend during Circuit Breaker was like, I'm going to teach myself to do videos and I'm going to upload them on TikTok. Uh, you guys might know him actually, he's a Zenus Jake, he's actually like pretty famous here. On, on TikTok? I would say he's pretty famous because he, he, people stop him on the street and ask for, to take photos. Wow, yeah. wow, famous. Yeah. That's how, Do you know? No, sorry, I haven't been on the talks <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been trying to avoid the talks because it's very, uh, I'm time traveling every time I open TikTok. <laughs> it's, it's very time consuming. Yeah, it's really, true, and you forget that you're on it and then two hours later you're like, it's 4 a.m. Yeah, that's how you, <laughs> time yeah. travel exists. This and TikTok yeah. is it. Yeah, it's yeah. true, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um could you tell us a bit more about how you got to where you are today? Oh my god. Yes. yes. Oh, can the can the question be like more specific? Like huh. <laughs> like maybe um what what made you wanna be a mm. performer? Start from, oh okay. Start yeah. from the beginning. Oh okay, yes. okay. Yes. Right, that's a really start. good question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what made me want to be a performer? Um actually I've always been into like the arts, I guess, you know, like when I was a kid, I used to play the piano. My brothers are um, Krishna and Govindan of Flame of the Forest, if you guys have heard of them. Uh, they're a world music um, band. And my dad's also a musician. So when we were kids, he just encouraged us to pick up some sort of artistic, creative thing, you know. Did you, did you play um, the piano when you were growing up? Uh, or some form of instrument? Yeah, I never took formal lessons, but yeah. For me, it was the guitar. Guitar? Yeah. And, and yourself? Recorder. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it started with music, and then I thought, oh, I discovered that I actually also really like to sing. And then I realized there's such a thing called musical theater. Mm. And so I went to La Salle to study musical theater. Wow. Yeah. Um, and in musical theatre, we have like three main like subjects. So we have like singing, obviously, dancing, and acting. So mm-hmm. a lot of, uh, most people are either actor, singer, or actor, dancer. And the reason that acting was like a base uh, requirement is because we are all storytellers. 
Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because in, within like singing, you have to convey the emotion also, yeah. right? When and like a story, yeah. you're not just singing for yeah, yeah, yourself, yeah. you know, you're telling the story so that we can move to the next scene. And if you're dancing, you're also telling the story so people can move to the next yeah, scene. So right. I think at the core, um, a lot of creatives are actually storytellers. Oh. And they have a story to tell. That's true. Yeah, they have a situation in life that they, that propels them to want to create something around it, to tell the story, to That's true. draw other people with the same sort of... Sorry, to draw other people who share the same life story as them so they mm. don't feel so alone, right? Mm, yeah. Right. It's very inspirational and aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to LaSalle? Yeah, great. Okay. And then afterwards you graduated and then what you just Oh, started. that's the best part of my life, man. I went to Disney. Oh, you yeah, went yeah, to yeah. freaking yeah. Disney? I, I saw a form at Disney. I saw your photos on your website. I was like, oh my gosh, she's, <laughs> she's a princess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, she's a real I life princess. A princess. I mean, I guess it's like, you know, when you're thinking like I'm a tech guy, it's like Microsoft, you know, I'm like yeah. into tech. Oh, uh, Steve Jobs. And if you're a performer, I feel like Disney for me was like the dream, you know? Yeah, and I was 22 and I they came to audition and I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to go out into the real world. I'm going to be auditioning for things. I should just go for an audition even though I'll never get it. Right? But you, but got, you it. got it. I got it. I got it. I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Which Disneyland were you? So I went to Hong Kong Disneyland wow. and I stayed there for like two contracts. Wow. Which is yeah. how long? Yeah, how long? So each contract is one year. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And then after that, like, I left now. God. Yeah. Please tell us more about your time at Disney. Like, it's great. Like, it really teaches you how to keep things fresh, even though you are doing the same show over and over again. It yeah. gets to a point where you're like, oh my god, like everything is the same. You know, I can be half asleep and I can think about what I'm cooking for dinner, but still um, doing the show. Mm. How is that possible? And and even sometimes, what's weird about it is when you snap out of that that day's mode into mm-hmm. reality, you forget your lines. It's like when you're like, oh, I'm back here. It, <laughs> what did I say? Uh? Oh, no. It's wow. really strange. Oh. And sometimes that happens. Yeah. Wow. But I think the one main thing that I've learned at Disney was like, how to have fun. I don't know. Okay, let me see if I can explain this. Um, so every month, the f- who we call the Fab Four will appear in the audience. They won't tell you when, but when you see sort of barricades on either side mm-hmm. of right. the auditorium, in, in one particular row is the best seats in the house. Mm. When you see the barricades up, you know the Fab Four are there. And the Fab Four are actually the people that hired you. So the casting director, the, the choreographer, the... You know, scary. The, yeah, yeah. The music <laughs> it's scary. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, very nervous. It's like your principal is there. Even as a Singaporean girl, you're like, oh my gosh, my bosses are here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to do the best show of my life so they'll keep me. You know, it's yeah, that yes. sort of feeling. I know that, that feeling. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's that feeling, right? Mm. And I realized that everybody that I was performing with felt the same way as well. Because even the best singers um, will mess up mm. when they are there. Mm. And all we are waiting for is for them to come backstage and say, really good job, guys. Oh really God. good job. <laughs> and it made me realize that maybe I'm putting way too much pressure on myself, you know? Maybe really what the audience really com- comes here to see is us having fun, mm. us telling the story. Yeah. And as long as we just do our job, then there shouldn't be any pressure. We should just be really enjoying ourselves. And so with that mentality, I feel like I've, I've shifted from, oh my gosh, I have to do my best because these people are here to watch, to let me show them a damn good time. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. I've suddenly shifted my mindset. Okay. To doing what? To, to Going to, to do just musical have fun, theater. Have fun, have fun. Have fun oh. Yeah, yeah to in front of my with boss, just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, now Pris is finally all about fun. <laughs> yeah, last time I was like, all business, you know. <laughs> Right. Okay. So two years at Hong Kong Disneyland. Mm. That, I think that's a very good, like, very good first gig, actually. I thought so too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> which leads me to gig. like a question, which is, you know, since you got your first gig at Hong Kong Disneyland, then I feel like after that you could have gone anywhere else, right? Mm. But yeah, I mean, you're right here in Singapore. Yeah. So like, I mean, yeah. what's what's up? What, what's up? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many things. Oh my God, like, okay, so I was a performer and then I came back to Singapore. Yeah. Um. And managed a French performer. How yeah, you, I know. Manage a performer. I guess I became talent oh, manager. Oh, you just became a talent manager. Yeah. Oh. I met him during during my stint at Disney. Mm-hmm. And I realized that he's super talented. But 
the, the thing with him is he cannot manage himself. Oh, he yeah. was really, really talented. I swear to God, like you look at him and you're like, oh my God, all the emotions, like when he's performing, you're like, you can feel everything. Right. And I, in some ways, I feel like I, I know that I am never going to achieve that. Right. Okay. As someone with my background and everything that I have accumulated in my life, I will never achieve that sort of like passion, you know. Mm-hmm. And just watching him really inspired me to want to help him achieve his. Mm. Yeah. Also, when I came back to Singapore, I asked someone in the industry and they were like, dude, it's so saturated, you'll never work. So I was like, you know what? Hey, you want to come over to Singapore? I manage you. We got corporate events here. It's really great. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, it's out of necessity, out of having to find a solution to my... To my to my own problems, which is you know how to make rent every month. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's super like self aware. Like you need to have some sort of self awareness to even do that, right? Because I think a lot of like people in the arts. I mean, I can say it so myself because I'm kind of like in the arts. <laughs> but then I guess we are we are more like you know oh this is a passion like this is my passion so I want to be involved in the arts. You know what I mean? But I guess like to have the self awareness of like where are you at. And like, what do you think you could achieve? What's is, realistic? Yeah, for what's you? realistic for yes, you? Yes, that was yeah. the word you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, what's realistic <laughs> for you? Like, at least you you have the flexibility to like look at other channels and being involved in the arts. Is it? I would say sometimes people would say that I sell out. You know, no, nah. and I think it's it may be true. You know, if I was a starving artist, I may create a lot more amazing art. Mm. But then, then you have to think about where your priorities are. Like, yeah. Do you want a nice life or do you want to be a starving artist? Because there is, I would say there is merit in both. You know, mm. starving artists create freaking great work and then they sell it for freaking great amounts, right? right. But I yeah. consistently have an income because I consistently create work for myself. Uh, and so because I'm in some sort of a comfortable position, I don't get to build more character. You know, I always think that problems are character building. So... Don't you think so? Yeah. When you have a problem, yeah. like yeah. get around it, yeah. be yeah. better, and then it's like adding another notch to your belt. Yeah, yeah that's true, true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you came back, then you managed this French. Mm. And actually, guy. we traveled the world while doing that. Yeah, it's insane. That's oh, crazy. Wow. I miss traveling the world now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so no, basically, sorry. shows lah, <laughs> shows corporate events in like Jakarta, in Shanghai, mm. in Beijing, and wow. I mean, basically, let's talk about not cities lah, talk about mm. countries lah. In Indonesia, in in China, in Hong Kong, just basically everywhere, I got to be his manager. I got to, and to me, I'm just playing a role, right? To mm. me, it's another role in wow. in my in my pursuit of being an actor. I'm like, yes, right now I am his talent manager, and uh, this is the contract. This <laughs> these are the things that you must fulfill. Only blue M and M's. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it'll be on my list of demands. Fifty teddy bears and uh, my <laughs> own toilet. <laughs> I don't know, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, then every time you give them a, a discount, you know, it's like, I give you a discount, right? So you need to treat my performer with mm. respect. Right. <laughs> it's so business-minded. Right? I love it though. Like, I don't think I could ever manage anyone, but I mean... You, you also myself. learn, actually what I really learned, sorry, actually what I really learned was that if I can take care of someone like this, why I cannot take care of myself like this? Yeah, I was gonna say that, like, if you can manage yourself, then... Only after you manage yourself, then you can take care of someone else, right? No? It really taught me a lot about love, you know? Crazy, right? How that can teach me about love. Does it even relate? Yeah, w- would you like to explain? I would like to also know how I to mean- <laughs> love. <laughs> you know how some people, some of us are very giving. Yeah. yeah. And some of us are takers, right? Uh-huh. I realise I'm, I'm a giver. Mm. So when, when my performer is like upset at something, right? I would try and make it so that he doesn't, he doesn't, I would try to make sure that his needs are met so that he can freely express himself when he's on stage, mm. right? And then I realized when I take jobs, I was still taking jobs for myself, like, you know, performing jobs mm. or like commercials or stuff like that, you know, here and there, aside from being a talent manager. Um, and I realized that I wasn't fighting for the terms that, for myself, that I was fighting for him. Okay. The terms that I was fighting for him were way higher, yeah. per diems, mm at least four-star hotel, you know, uh, transport everywhere, a SIM card, all this like three meals a day. And I was just like not doing the same for myself. Wow. That's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I've heard like people, like that's why people have 
um, like for example, uh, advertising agencies, that's why they have suits and like people in the middle to mm. like negotiate without objectively, mm. without being so involved in the work. Mm. So I think that's the role that you fulfill for him. But yeah. I, I'm, do you feel like you needed someone else to fulfill that role or do you think that you like, you need to reframe your mind to be, to play in that role? So to yeah, I guess that's a really good question. Um, I guess, I guess through the years, I, I've, okay, so I guess what I've really learned from this is that negotiation is very important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but from negotiation, I mean, you need to have a certain understanding of how much your time is worth, mm. which is another thing that, you know, is another, is another challenge that, uh, to me, I feel like only experience, t- wait, to me, I feel like the only way I learned that was through experience. You know, some people get very lucky and they get to learn it from a book or something like that or someone mm. teaching them or a mentor. But I had to learn it... Li- I, what? What? English, English. But I had to learn it through experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. From managing someone else. And then when he had to leave the country, I managed myself and I struggled for the first few months because my terms and conditions weren't as stringent as the terms and conditions I had for him. Right. Yeah. Because I don't know why. I actually don't know why. I think because yeah. like when you're when you're managing him, you you yourself like as a third pers- as a third party can see from both sides, yeah. right? Like what can the company offer mm. and what he deserves. Mm. Right? When we but yeah, when you're involved in the job because you love doing it, right? Yeah. So you kind of like discount yourself almost like That's true. That's like, true. like I really want this. Yeah. I really want this. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. so I don't know. I feel, I think that's I think that's normal lah. Because yeah. I mean, I also see it for like um, you know, like digital artists when mm. they when they set their rates and, yeah. and for for commissions and stuff, they tend to undervalue themselves. That's true. Uh, yeah. I think artists in general, don't you think? Yeah. Because yeah. there's no like, there's no list of like okay, if you have two years experience, yeah, this is yeah. your rate. Yeah. Right. yeah, and also yeah. there's a lot of people that undermine artists as well. They always say, "Oh, we give you exposure, a platform for exposure." Oh, it's always yeah. the same, old, right? Yeah, same yeah. Old shit. for passion. Like, yeah. oh, don't you love it? To, uh, yeah. Um. Yes, but yeah, but I also love money. Ah, uh. it doesn't pay my rent. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. I love paying rent on time. When you are applying to go to like the sale, do you ever feel like you know, why if I cannot make it? Always, yeah. always, right? Yeah. Yeah. Always because. You, you literally never know. You, you legitly do not know what they are looking for. Even in all jobs, right? When you yeah. go to an interview for a new job or when you, you go to an audition for a new role. So I've actually learned. Wow, I learned a lot, yeah. Mm. It's because I'm old. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like I've learned that you go into an audition without expecting anything. You do your best. You imagine that that role is yours already and... Mm. and they're going to mass publish it wow. and then you do that audition like that right. but then immediately after I would totally forget I, I don't know why but I feel like I'm trained I trained myself to not remember the, the name of the project the, the company the production house nothing I just go in done have fun go home mm. wait for them to contact or they don't Right. Do you think uh, like putting all those details adds unnecessary pressure then makes you like go out of the that state of I just think performing. so. You know, bring it back to again, yeah. you know, when I was in Disney. Disney yeah. And then I'm thinking like, I need this so, yeah, I need yeah, to yeah, impress yeah. them so much and I forget to enjoy myself. Yeah. You know, so I think that's definitely so weird to leave. Yeah. Like. I think it's got something to do with how you deal with situations under pressure. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it is a very pressurizing situation to sit in front of a person and sell yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. already hard to sell yourself on email, on paper, on the contract, yeah. you know, like for One negotiations. In person. in person, then yeah. you have to meet you, then they ask you your name, you're like, uh, 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 not <laughs> sure. My name? What's his name? What's his name? I got nothing out of name. Uh uh-uh, baby. What? And then they ask you like, okay, in this situation, what will you do? You're like, oh my God, like, uh, you know, yeah. like, it's just nerve wracking. And I think the best way I can advise people on how to ace <laughs> that interview is to go in understanding that you are either a fit or you aren't mm. because they're not judging you based on your maybe your qualifications maybe or your your personality you, you never know what they're looking for mm. but if you don't get selected I think it's because the person interviewing you realizes that you may not be a fit 
for the ecosystem that they're trying to build. Mm. So it's nothing to, to do with you mm. or what you haven't achieved or what you are not. Right. It's more like they don't see themselves and you creating magic. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like, it's almost like dating, right? Just don't fear rejection. If you don't fear rejection, then you just be like, oh, is this <laughs> easier said than done though yeah, yeah. It, is, it is I think it's, it has to do with like how you reframe the situation as mm. well yeah. you have a job to do yeah. you are going in to share a little bit about who you are and if you get rejected then it's because you weren't meant to be in this project or something yeah you know? yeah I'm interested to know because I mean like when you talk about a career in the arts um as an actor or a singer-songwriter. I think generally people in Singapore don't really seem to, I mean, I don't know if I'm just making a generalization, but it feels like it's not one of those careers that will bring in the big bucks, I guess, to most people in, mm. in our society. And I've had a lot of conversations with my grandma in the past, and I told her, like, I want to do music for a living. And she's like, ah, and then how are you going to eat your food? How are you going to pay rent? How are you going to raise me? I'm just like, how are you going to raise me? All the emotional blackmail, my heart. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but but you know that's the that's the narrative that we always hear mm. Like you want to do career in arts, go overseas. You know. Mm. So how do you? I don't know. Like, is do you think it's like a risk to try and embark on a career in the arts in in a place like Singapore? I think there are risks everywhere. Mm. Just yeah. because you have a job long term doesn't mean a pandemic won't hit and you will lose it. You won't. You know. You they'll keep you. There's risk everywhere. There's risk walking across the road. Yeah. There's risk falling in love. Mm. There's risk writing your own show. And there's risk in being an artist. I think it's the same. It's w- what drives you as a person that's important. Mm. You know? What's, what's, what do you feel so passionate about that you are willing to take that risk? Mm. Right. And you know what actually hurts me a lot is when people are like, like some people, even, you, even the most famous people, some people also don't know, right? Sometimes when I, I'm not saying I'm famous, but <laughs> like, you know, sometimes like I'm in a grab and then the grab driver is like, oh, you actress, is it? Or like, uh, were we talking and then he'll ask what you do and I say, I'm, I'm an actress, a, a host and a content creator. And he's like, huh? Actress? <laughs> wow, like, I never seen you before. And you know, that is really, that really yeah. hurts sometimes. Yeah. Yes. But at the same time, um, people I feel like people tend to judge artists on whether they've made it or not. Yeah. Which like their is, standards though, which is basically I want like channel five, channel yeah, eight. I must have seen you on, yeah, on screen. Yeah, something like that. For you to have made but it. then if they are accountant, you f- you famous or not? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a ridiculous <laughs> question yeah, to ask yeah. someone, right? I guess because you are don't you the associate the CEO of the company. Yeah. Did did you experience any, you know, like struggles over the years and I guess specifically in terms of getting gigs or Mm. yeah um definitely definitely Mm -hmm. i think everyone inside and outside of the entertainment industry also has struggles with Mm -hmm. getting gigs getting Mm -hmm. work right and i guess i keep saying that because you know we see being an entertainer or a media personality as something entirely outside of the business world which it isn't Mm -hmm. it's if you can negotiate a better rate if you can negotiate your loading better then you get more money then. Negotiate what? Loading? Loading rate. So like where they 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 uh, publicize your, your programs. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. sometimes, you know, on, on the TV screen and cinema, mm. on a billboard. We don't right. have a billboard in Singapore, but you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. yeah yes. How many countries, that sort of thing. Mm. So that sort of adds up for you, right? And also at the same time, if you're negotiating for yourself and you don't negotiate it right, then you just accept what they're sen- the they're, they're, they're proposing. Mm. You, you just accept what you just accept their initial proposal, you know? Right. It can be anything. It can be any amount. Literally, it can be $80 for 10 days and some people will say yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because wow. exposure, exposure, you see? Exposure. Mm. Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, what's your experience like? What do you think about, you know, I think because you've had gigs overseas, you've also done stuff locally as well. Is there any like real difference between, I don't know, doing what you do overseas and in Singapore? Um... I think that's a really good question. Um, again, I think it boils down to the contract that you that you negotiate for. So even being a media personality or an artist, I feel like you need to also be a little bit of a business person because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's 
how much your time is worth. Yeah. Right? Knowing your worth. Mm. And usually overseas, it depends. If you deal with them directly, they have a different sort of protocol than when, if, you, if you deal with a, a local production house mm. because they understand what Singaporeans will expect and it's not very much. Oh. Yeah. Someone in Malaysia actually told me that um, the producers, <laughs> when they see that it's a Singaporean actor, they will really give them a shitty price because the chances of them accepting it is really high, as in us accepting it. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, it hurts my heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you think like, came, like, brought this reputation like, like, about? What, what do you think? Some of us might have said yes to $80 yeah, 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 for 10 days. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the natural yeah, it's assumption. Not, uh. It's not always $80. For, I'm just saying there yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, I really think that it's because we, we allow, because yes. we want to be in this production. And why, why, why not, right? You want to get yourself out there. You know, you want to be seen because they cannot hire you if they don't know you exist, right? Yeah. So if it is indeed for exposure, then by all means, take no money for this exposure. But then at some point, you need to learn how to put a price on your time mm -hmm. and, your, and your expertise. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Do you have any advice for like, you know, like young people out there who want to one day be yeah. an actor, yeah. Mm. Yeah. MC, mm. singer, songwriter, who knows? Mm. Yeah. Advice, ah? Uh. Yeah. Mm. Go into it understanding that you will have to dig very deep into yourself just to keep going. Mm. Also, find something that you can do on the side that will supplement income for the very beginning stages. It can be anything. Right. But also, always remember on your... Uh, always focus on your goal. Your end goal is to, what? Be an actress or be a host. And watch as many things as you can. Find people that inspire you who have made it. Find people that inspire you that haven't made it, that are still going. Because for most of us, that's the life that we're going to lead and you have to accept who you are um, as you are and sometimes you just have to not aspire to be greater mm. right. and it's not it's not that you know i think there's beauty in mediocrity you know yeah. if you aim for the stars when you fall short you could be Still pretty high, high, you know? Still somewhere pretty but good. But yeah. also at the same time, you have to understand that not all of us are made for Hollywood stardom. Yeah. So you have to be realistic as well. It's true. I think you have to sacrifice a lot also to be there. It, as a Hollywood actor? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think sacrifices that a lot of us still are not aware of. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Oh, I wanted to ask, like, uh, what would you say is the hardest thing about being in the media like media. like as a host mc mm -hmm. like act actress even oh. content creation yeah yeah um probably when people comment negative comments because you put your heart and soul into everything you do and um, just because one person doesn't like it doesn't mean it's irrelevant mm -hmm. or doesn't mean it's bad you know, every person that you meet will have a different opinion of who you are. Mm -hmm. And it can be true or you can be untrue, but you have to really, really grow giant dinosaur balls or a giant dinosaur uterus. Exactly. That's right. And yes. really don't care. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. So now I'm only always just trying to make it happen. That is all. That is my focus. At the beginning of the month, I'm like, who do I want to work with this month? Who do I have to contact? You know, it's not so much about, well, I, I don't know when the next casting is. I'm freaking like, I want to be an actress, like proper actress for, for drama, for comedy, for everything. But then on the side, how can I put what I know to good use so that I don't have to be struggling so much? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's very good advice. Basically, just be proactive. <laughs> Honestly. Well. It all comes down to <laughs> being very proactive. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's the end of our episode. Uh, thanks for coming down to our lovely office to have this very lovely conversation with us. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, once again, this is uh, Kate. Kate of all traits right. on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Any last words for us? 
Mm, yeah, if you'd like to join um, me on my Instagram, that'd be great. Um, it's Kate of All Traits on Instagram, and I would love to share with you my life, uh, what I do, and uh, as well as my content, which I really love um, producing. So it'd be great if you can support that too. Oh, and TikTok also. I'm also same same handle on TikTok. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap on another episode of Keep It Simple. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe. And also leave a comment, especially if you like these faces. I mean, even if you don't like these faces, please comment anyway because we want to know what you think. And we're also on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. So if you're on those platforms, remember to subscribe for new episodes. Keep it simple. Keep it simple